What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggle's TV Daily Rewind. It's where we go back a week, give you all of your tech news in one single story. And this week, let me tell you, amazing. So we have Galaxy Z Fold 3 news on the U under display camera, which is going to be a huge technology for all future phones. And it looks like that phone is getting it. It's a really, really hot rumor. We go into full detail. With that, we go into detail about Apple's upcoming foldable phone, which would take on the Galaxy Z Fold line. We have information on One UI 3.1 coming out to basically every Samsung phone and so much more. Enjoy this week. We'll see you in the next one. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the Note 21, kinda. So there's rumors that the Note 21 won't be coming out. It was going back and forth that it would, and then, and then it wouldn't. And it looks like it still won't, kinda. Because there's rumors of a Note 21 fan edition. And if the Note 21 fan edition comes out, this is Let's Go Digital's renders of what they think it's going to look like. So let's look at it and maybe get excited about this. So here's what it looks like and this, well, what they think it's going to look like. So none of this is, is a given in terms of the phone even coming out or this phone you know, even looking like this, but this is again, just, you know, what they think. So this is what they think it would look like with the camera, very similar to what you get with the Galaxy S21 series with that rounded corner around the camera and then the camera that does stick out a little bit there. You get the three cameras, you're gonna get an ultra wide. And then another photo shows what potentially would come um, inside of the box. And that being very slim, remember, you'd get the S Pen, a SIM card ejector, the phone, the box, and a USB-C to USB-C cable, no charging brick, no headphones that would probably would not come in the box. I would expect actually micro SD card expansion to still be with the Galaxy Note 21 fan edition. I just, I have a feeling they would keep it there. Could be wrong, but again, that's just kind of what I feel like. Also, we see another photo here that shows that the, in, the S Pen would potentially be inserted into the phone. So you wouldn't need a case like you do with the S21 Ultra. You would physically put the pen in there just like you would with all the other Note 21s as well. And then you just have to remember that with these fan edition phones, it's not, you know, the most highly specced out phone that you can get from, from Samsung for that specific category. So you're probably looking at a phone that's gonna have six or eight gigabytes of RAM, a phone that might have an 865 plus processor, maybe it'll have the 888 uh, Snapdragon in there, or even, you know, the, the latest Exynos. You're probably looking at a display, it's probably gonna be 1080p plus 120 Hertz. So some of this stuff isn't the end of the world. You're still gonna get a quality phone. You won't get, probably get like the best speakers. You get like solid, you know, mid-tier to high-tier, somewhere in that range. The price is probably still gonna be in that $700 to $1,000 range. I know it's a big range, but you're still probably looking at something within that range for this phone. So if we don't get a Note 21, just a plain Note 21, but maybe we get a Note 21 Fan Edition, would you guys be interested in that? Let me know in the comments down below. And our last story of the day is about the Galaxy Z Fold 3. This is the Galaxy Z Fold 2, and this has been a constant rumor about this phone not having this feature. And that feature is a camera on top of the display. With the last two folds, we've had it directly at the top there. We've had it cut out on the Note 1, on the Z Fold 1, and then on the Z Fold 2, we have a fairly large camera hole. Now, I will admit that the camera hole doesn't really get into my way. It doesn't bother, bother me, it doesn't bug me or anything like that, but would it be nice if it was completely gone to make this like fresh, clean look? Yeah, it kind of would. Check out this tweet from Ice Universe. His tweet, as you can see, says the following. It says that the Galaxy Z Fold 3 is still very likely to adopt UPC, which is under panel camera. That's what UPC stands, UPC stands for, under panel camera. And he's saying he's got a great track record. So if he's saying this, there's a very, very good chance that the Z Fold 3 could potentially be the first, I think it's the first Samsung phone that, that would have this, right? It's the first Samsung phone that wouldn't have the camera on top of the display since they've gone to this format. I'm not talking about a cutout or somewhere else on the phone literally just all display underneath there. And then the only question that remains and that I'm worried about, and I've said this before, is 
are the the photos that come out of this camera that are underneath the display are they going to come out just as good as one that's on top of the display because if they're not don't even do this wait till the technology is there so it looks amazing and as equal if not better than what we get now because it's as much as cool as it is to have it under the panel on top of the panel, if the photos are better, I would want that. But Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day, if you're looking for a Chromebook and you love Samsung Chromebooks, because you know Chromebooks overall are really difficult to get, at least they were the past few months since COVID started about almost a year ago. Well, you can pre-order one now. Samsung is put up for pre-order their new Galaxy Chromebook 2. They start for as little or if you want to call it little, $549, and they go for as much as $699 if you max it out with their i3 processor, 128 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM, and they'll be available on March 1st. They do have some trade-ins if you want to take advantage of that to take the price a little bit lower. Also, as you can see, you will get a $50 Samsung credit that you can use towards Galaxy Buds Pro, or their Watch 3, or something else. And again, that is linked down below. And again, if you're looking for a, a, a Chromebook, Samsung Chromebooks are really, really nice. Uh, my brother-in-law got one, he absolutely loves it. They have great displays, it's a QLED display. And a price, again, a little bit high on the for the Chromebook side. But if you're looking for a Chromebook, this should be pretty good. And the last story of the day is about a potential iPhone folding phone. And now, this is a lot of salt, pinches of salt. This might and probably won't come true, but it also might. So we're just gonna talk about it just for the sake of it because it's kind of a slow tech news day and it's kind of fun. I love folding phones. I love my Galaxy Z Fold 2. Galaxy Z Fold 3 will come out this year as well and folding phones seem to be the future of mobile technology whereas everybody's putting one out. So why not Apple? All right, so this information is coming from iPhone in Canada. It's a you know a blog site, and they're talking about a uh, translation from a Chinese analyst analyst firm called Equal Ocean, and they have reported that Apple's first foldable phone may add Apple Pencil support. Additionally, the firm claims that the foldable iPhone will feature a 7.3 to 7.6 inch OLED display and may launch in 2023. Here's the exact translation uh, from what they said, from what Equal Ocean said. Omidia, a global communication and digital media research organization, predicts that the Apple may launch a 7.3 to 7.6 inch OLED smartphone in 2023 and add an activity pen to its foldable iPhone, now Activity Pen is a translation to probably mean Apple Pencil. So that brings it into line with what we kind of expect actually with the next Galaxy Z Fold 3, which is rumored to have S Pen support, have a 7.6 inch display, which this one is 7.6, but the big takeaway would be the, the pencil support. And that's gonna be very similar. And But obviously with Apple, you're gonna get the same ecosystem that you know and love, which would be compatible with your MacBook and your Apple TV and darn well integrated with everything. But now having a foldable device, this would really make me want uh, to get that Apple phone because I love foldable phones. I know how much I love how large this display is and beautiful it is and having an OLED display on this and an OLED display on that. I don't know, it'd be really cool to try out. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about YouTube TV. It's YouTube's streaming TV network service so that you can, it's like, you know, at home cable streaming service. So if you wanna stream television shows and watch live television and all that, you can do that with YouTube TV. Now, when it first came out, it came out at about $35 per month. Fast forward to a couple of years later, which is now, it's at $70 per month. So they doubled the price. They've added a few networks and things like that, but doubling the price, it's crazy expensive at this point. And to add on to that cost, they put a kind of State of the Union address out on their official blog site talking about YouTube in general. That counts as YouTube, YouTube TV, YouTube Music, YouTube Kids, etc. all those. But the one we're gonna talk about is YouTube TV to talk about some things that will be coming out for YouTube TV in the very near future. Here's what they had to say. They said, YouTube TV will introduce a new add-on package with 4K streaming, offline viewing, AKA offline, you know, so you can download TV shows, and unlimited concurrent streams at home. Now, 
The keyword is add on from there. So it's going to be an additional cost if you want those new features. But this is kind of cool. I mean, right now it streams in up to 1080p. So to be able to get 4K streaming on your 4K television, I mean, it should be included, to be honest with you, already for free. It's not, but whatever. I guess the other part to that is that, you know, if you have a household that has a bunch of TVs, a bunch of people that want to stream a bunch of YouTube TV, if you get this package, you'll be able to stream as many, uh, how, as many, as much as you want, basically, as long as you're in the same household. So you could have, sounds like you'd have 30 t different televisions with 30 different streams going on. As for when exactly this comes out, I'm not sure, but it sounds like the very near future and as well as the cost, I would assume it's probably going to be at least $10 a month, if not more. And our last story of the day, we spoke about it yesterday, Apple coming out with a foldable phone sometime probably in 2023, at least that's what the rumors are saying. So it's still, you know, two years away for this foldable phone to come out and it should compete probably with what uh, Samsung has done, either with the flip or more likely the fold because it's rumored to be in that 7.3 to 7.6 inch display range. Well, we have some more information about this now just to let you know before i dive too too deep into this iphone apple they generally use lg or samsung displays and they have been and samsung has been also rumored to be making displays for their foldable phone without further ado let's talk about this i'm pulling this off of the mac rumor site i'll link it down below but they're also getting it from digitimes and you can see from the headline lg reportedly assisting apple on foldable display development apple has commissioned lg display to develop a display panel destined for a foldable iphone according to the chinese language version of DigiTimes and it says citing industry sources. DigiTimes claims that LG Display is assisting Apple with the development of a foldable OLED display panel for an iPhone. It is not clear, however, if LG Display will supply Apple with this display panel for mass production once it has been developed. But you can expect that when it does come out, have it be if LG, LG actually makes it for them or Samsung or both, just like we heard yesterday, it should be an OLED display, which should match. At this point, all the I think all the iPhones, all the major iPhones uh, are OLED displays. All the major Samsung phones are OLED. Um, LG puts out OLED displays with basically all their top end or top mid to high top end phones. So it, it should be a great display. LG makes really good displays. I still feel like Samsung makes the best on phones. But regardless, you're looking at, this is getting hotter and hotter, these rumors, and when, you, when you're adding companies for parts and things like that, maybe it would be before 2023. And Samsung should be getting more and more competition, which means if we get more and more competition with you know, Samsung's Galaxy Fold line, the prices should come down as well for everybody involved. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the Google Chromecast with Google TV. If you have that device and you've been waiting for the Apple TV Plus app, Apple TV Plus is their version of kind of like their Netflix, so it has all their own original television shows. You can buy movies and other TV shows through it as well. But regardless, if you want it and you have a Chromecast with Google TV, it's the app is now available. Here's a little photo that I took of the app. You can get all your favorite TV all in one app. Watch critically acclaimed Apple originals and films from Apple TV Plus. Buy or rent new and popular movies. So yeah, available right now. I searched for it, couldn't find it. What I had to do is I had to uh, go over to the apps tab at the top and then down below, uh, you'll see the Apple TV apps. Just click on it, download it, and you should be ready to go. Log in with your Apple login and you should see everything that you want to watch. Next up is all about Samsung Galaxy phones, a lot of them especially if they're current phones, and it has to do with the One UI 3.1 update for these phones. There is a bunch of phones that have, they have just pushed the One UI 3.1 update out for. It's the same update. This phone, the Galaxy S21 uh, series of phones, this is the Ultra version, has the One UI 3.1 update. But what about the other phones? They don't, right? They have One UI 3.0. Well, One UI 3.1 is currently rolling out. Get ready for this the S20 phones, the Note 20 phones, the Z Flip, 
the Z Flip 2 and the Z Fold 2 as well as some of their mid-tier phones as well. So go into to settings and see if you got the update, go into settings and then software updates at the bottom and download and install. I didn't get it unless it shows up right now when I click on it. I checked earlier this morning, I still, it's still checking. Come on. I know it's in like UK and Germany and stuff like that, places like that. Oh my God, it's taking forever. While it does that, I doubt I have it. But if I do, yeah, just check your update. You should get it hopefully within the next days, weeks, hopefully not months. But if you have one of those phones, you should be getting it right now. Speaking of that update, there is a new tidbit of information for people that are getting the One UI 3.1 update. Cause you know, when you swipe over from the left to the right, you have Amazon free, which as you can see, I don't really use cause it's asked me to agree to something. And it's just a, basically a news feed. Well, One UI 3.1 brings along with it, you would think anyway, because it's on the Galaxy S21 phones. You can use the Google feed instead. I love this, I, it's a great little feed. It's one of the, my favorite things about One UI 3.1. Well, the other phones that I just mentioned, the Z Fold 2, the Note 20, S20, all those phones will not have the Google feed, unfortunately. You still be stuck, stuck to uh, Samsung free or whatever they have it, they call it. I don't know why they're doing it. I guess the other piece of the puzzle is that any new Samsung phones that have One UI 3.1 or newer uh, that are released upcoming will have the, Sam the Google feed on it. So I don't, I don't know why they're leaving it off. I don't know if it's a contractual thing or whatever, but you still won't get that with the Samsung uh, launcher built into there to be able to have the Google feed. If you want the Google feed, you're gonna have to use a third party launcher which unfortunate, not unfortunate, I guess the way you look at it, I'm definitely disappointed in it. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is a deal. Who doesn't like a good deal? If you're looking to get a phone, kind of that mid tier to upper tier type phone, the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition, Galaxy S20 FE also, it's as it's known as, is on sale right now on Amazon for a hundred bucks off. You can get it for $599.99. Remember, this has a Snapdragon 865, six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of bytes of storage. It is the unlocked version of the phone and you can use it on basically any network, especially here in America. I'll link it down below if you wanna pick it up. Next up is all about Samsung's next Galaxy Watch that'll come out this year, 2021. Um, it's Galaxy Watch Active 3, Galaxy Watch 4, we'll see what it ends up being. But regardless, this is pretty big and it has to do with the software that it runs. You can see from this tweet right, from, right here from Ice Universe saying Samsung's new watch will use Android to replace Tizen. And if you didn't know, Tizen is the operating system that Samsung watches have used for a while at this point. There's been rumors that it was gonna switch over to Android. How is this going to affect everything? I would still assume that we're gonna get very good app compatibility, that all the, all the apps that you probably use now on your, your Galaxy Watch probably will carry over to the Android side. The big thing that we should see on this that hasn't been on, it's actually two things. You should see Google Assistant, so you should be able to say, hey, blah, 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 I won't say it because I don't want everybody to go off in mine. And, and talk to your watch that way. That's a great thing. It's one thing I, for me that's kind of been a little bit of a turnoff in terms of Galaxy watches is you didn't have Google Assistant. The other thing we should see is native Google Maps or Waze support uh, so that you have maps right on your watch. This is good. I think it's in the general sense of uh, compatibility and support, app support, it should be better. So those are two things I can think right off the top of the bat that would be better. Plus you should also have a bigger app library. You're gonna get a mixture of probably apps that were on Tizen and now the Android side as well. Last story of the day has to do with basically a lot of Android phones. So you might wanna check. I'm gonna be talking about specifically uh, the Galaxy uh, phones right now. I, this phone, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 and the Galaxy S21 Ultra, but I know it's on other phones as well. It's, I think it's on like the Note 9 and S9 and like basically any phone. So what I'm gonna show you, check. And uh, if you don't have it, check your uh, Google Play Store updates and then check from there afterwards. So first thing, on Galaxy, this is specific to this phone, but on the Galaxy Z Fold 2, when you would start a video, especially if you didn't have YouTube open on the, the small screen here, 
I'll, I'll just show you. I'm gonna close all my apps and then I'm gonna open up my YouTube app and I'm going to just search, uh, you know, 4K, 4K videos, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna play this, uh, I'll, I'll play this 4K video. It's playing right now. You turn the volume down. I'm gonna hit the three dots and before it would only play in 720p, but look at this. I don't know if you can see that. It literally says 2160 HDR at that. So it's now playing 4K HDR videos on the front. But remember on the front, it would only do 720p and then you'd open up and it'd still be 720p until you closed the video. So that's what I'm basically talking about is YouTube itself, not even just the front screen, but YouTube itself and all these phones can now play 4K HDR videos. Before it would max out at 1440p and now maxes out at 2160p. Actually, let me check 8K. I didn't even check that. Let me see if 8K works. Don't even know. Maybe it will play in 8K. Let's check that out. Here's an 8K video. I don't think it does. I think it's just 4K. Uh, yeah, so 2160 H up to HDR is the max video settings you will now get on I know a lot of the Galaxy phones, I believe other Android phones as well, so just go in there and check, but definitely a bunch of, of Galaxy phones. It could be, it doesn't just have to be the Z Fold 2, so open up your YouTube app. I got my video loaded up, play this one, hit the three dots, 720p, there you go. Plays it in 2160, and as long as you have a good connection, it's gonna play it beautifully. So obviously your screen, most likely on your Android phone, because I think Sony's the only company that makes 4K screens. Is, good, is not a 4K screen. These Galaxy phones aren't 4K screens, but it's gonna give you the best resolution that it can offer at up, you know, 4K downscaled to, uh, you know, a 2K plus display. So very, very cool that we finally had this, have this. Uh, iPhone has had it for a very long time. So it's good that it's finally with Android. I don't know why it hasn't been with us. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the Galaxy S21 and a major reason why you would want this phone because of that really amazing, cool zooming feature that this phone has. Check this out. This is, I got this information uh, from a Reddit post. It's a video and it picks up something disgustingly gross and cool because of this zoom on the camera. This is a post from Daxter619. I wonder if he's from San Diego. Our new foster puppy had a moving flake on her body. We used the S21 zoom to identify the mite. Watch till the end for scale. And checking this nastiness out, it's gross. You can see it like really, really good with the zoom on there. Even, even, even though he says it's like 3X, uh, in manual video, and he manually focused it with the uh, the, the uh, pro mode video. That's freaking nasty, but so so cool that you can actually see that, especially when you when he zooms all the way out to show you exactly what he was looking at. So, what do you guys think about that? What's the nastiest thing that you've zoomed in on and caught with the the zoom lens on your Samsung Galaxy phone? Last story of the day is. Dream Phone 2021. This is a really slow tech news today, and I saw this tweet from Marquez Brownlee, MKM, MKBHD, and he put out his uh, Dream Phone for 2021, and I kind of wanted to go over what he said versus what I would want in a Dream Phone. So let's check this out. So he's saying he would want the display from the Galaxy S21 Ultra 120 hertz, 1440p OLED. Now, he's basically saying this phone right here. It's, the display is beautiful, but I would rather have a folding display. It's bigger, and that's really the main reason. So I would choose a, a fold two display at this point in time, or it will end up being the fold three, but the fold two display, I love the display. I love the size of it as well, so I would go fold two. Next up, he says, size, boxy shape of iPhone 12 matte rails. For me, again, I'd go the fold route. I, I don't mind the way the Z Fold 2 looks. I don't mind the way the size of it. So I'd, again, go with that. As for the battery, it says 6,000 milliamp battery. I think that's pretty fair. You, of course, you'd want something like 10,000, but the bigger the battery, the more weight to it. So even 6,000 is gonna be really heavy. But again, if you have that spread across a bigger phone like the Z Fold 2, it might feel a little bit easier and less fatigue on your hand just because it's more spread out. I don't know, maybe it wouldn't, maybe it'd be just as bad. Regardless though, 
6,000 milliamps, I'll just say, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. 100 watt wireless charging, that's crazy ridiculous. Again, I'll take it. That's wireless charging, remember, 100 watt. That would charge in a 6,000 milliamp battery, would probably charge in 45 minutes, I would assume. Uh, cameras from the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I haven't played with that phone, but I don't mind the cameras from the iPhone 11 last year. I liked them. I thought they took good photos and good video. I don't know if I would argue too much against that. I like the, the, the photos and videos from the Galaxy. I like the photos from the Pixel phones. So I feel like the iPhone's kind of like a little bit in between too. It's like a little bit of Pixel, a little bit of Samsung phone mixed in together. I don't know, I'd go with what he says, I guess. Photo processing from the Pixel 4, yes, totally. The photo processing, I love. Pixel 4 is great with that. Making sure everything's in focus and the colors look good. I'm fine with that as well. Um, Android 12 software, totally again with that. I like Android the best. I wouldn't mind if it ran One UI you know, 3.1. I like this software. It's I'd probably even choose this. So I, I, I guess I'd go a little bit different. I'd be Android 12, but you no know, One UI 3.2 or 3.5, whatever they end up using. And then he says comes with a charger. Yes, of course, a fast charger at that. At least 45 watt. Well, I want more than that. I'd say 65 watt ch wire, wired charging or 100 watt wired charging at that. So what is going on, guys? Welcome to Gregel's TV Daily. We have two stories today and they're both very similar products and they're coming from Samsung. These are really, really cool. If you wanna see them, cause I'm not gonna really, I'm gonna describe them due to the fact that these seem to be leaked videos directly from Samsung that this person got uh, by the name of Walking Cat and I don't wanna get a copyright strike. So if you wanna check these out, it's linked down below. You can check out his Twitter and watch the videos in their entirety, but I'm going to explain them to you because these products, they're nothing new in terms of they're gonna be something that other companies aren't already working on, but you can actually see what these are gonna be like. It's they're, they're really, really cool. The first one, they're both glasses and they're both pretty thick. The first one is Samsung Glasses Lite, L-I-T-E. And what these are going to be are glasses that you would put on and instead of you physically looking at a display on your phone or on your computer monitor or your even your TV, they're gonna be glasses that you can wear and interact with you know, certain devices. So if you had a keyboard, you'd be typing on a real keyboard like you would, but you'd be your display would be through your eyes and you might have a, a giant display, again, through your glasses that you're looking at. That's virtual, the, the display itself is virtual, but everything else is physical that you're using. Your mouse is physical, your keyboard is physical. If you're playing video games, your controller is physical, but you could be laying back on a couch and again, wherever you're looking through those glasses, that's your huge, beautiful, you know, 4K, 8K display, whatever it ends up being. That is something that's gonna be a game changer for things because you'll have a lot more room in your house. You won't need this huge house or a huge room to have this gigantic TV or, or experience and take up all this room in your, your house or your living space or your office. You'd literally just put on glasses and be able to consume media or do work game changer. I can't wait. And hopefully this technology does come out. The other glasses are a 3D holographic lens. And these are again, glasses that you put on, but instead of you using like a physical keyboard or mouse or gamepad or something like that, everything is virtual. So if you see a screen through the glasses, you're literally touching in the air, or controlling it some way like that, swiping, all that stuff is virtual. I think this is really cool too. For me, I think I'd rather still hold something physical like a gamepad or a keyboard or a mouse physically rather than just doing air gestures. I think the, the holographic ones would come in really handy when you're walking or you're out and about and you can't you know, physically hold something. That's where I see that being more being a, a helpful hand and making your life you know, smoother and easier to use rather than having something physical in your hand to have to control it. But those are the two products. Check the links out down below. They're pretty magnificent. Cool music, cool production. Hopefully this stuff is real because it, it looks amazing. It's very futuristic. 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. New videos every single day. My question out to you guys, out of these two technologies, which one gets you more excited or you more interested in? Let me know in the comments down below. For me, I, you can probably see where I'm headed towards. It's the glasses light, the first one I was talking about. That's what I would be more interested in. But let me know what you guys think. We'll see you guys down the road.